Hey you guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm your girl Lady Will. If you're new here, I recommend you go back and watch my first video on how it all started. I'll link it up to the top. If you've been here and been rocking with me, welcome back. For those that are been around the channel for a while, just try something different by um, Talk About It Tuesday. But then work and life happened, so things didn't go as well as I planned. But I wanted to refocus back on that while I'm out. Again, to those that know that I'm um, off the bike for a while because of recent surgery. But what I wanted to do is change the topic. Instead of talk about it Tuesday, we're going to change it. Or well, I changed it to let's dive in. Let's dive in gives me more freedom. It's not on a particular day and it's not about a particular. So the topic today is ride your ride. So let's dive in. If you're new to riding motorcycles, you probably aren't familiar with the phrase ride your ride. But if you've been riding for, I want to say at least a month or so, you should be very familiar with the term ride your ride. And if you're not, then let me explain. So basically in a nutshell, ride your ride is just riding within your capabilities, your skill set. Many of you know, I've been riding motorcycles maybe about two years roughly and I've never ridden anything outside of a pedal bike, and I keep saying that for a reason. Because I am fairly new to riding, I'm sharing with you guys all my day-to-day -day experiences. And what I've learned is that it is very easily for you to get out here or for anyone to get out here with a group of people and feel like, oh, I should be doing this, or you measuring your uh, skill set to the next person, or you figuring, I've been riding for 20 years, so I should be able to ride better than this person. This is strictly skill set based, and it is okay that you cannot ride faster than the next person, or you can't go around the curve faster than the next person, or you can't whatever than the next person. The object of the game is to come back alive. Here's some tips to resist the urge to ride outside of your skill set. And I believe self-awareness is one of them. Be honest with yourself um, about your riding abilities. If you can't do such and such, then go practice and become better at that. Okay. Recognize that improving skills takes time. Um, a lot of the time you hear seat time, seat time. That is an accurate picture of learning how to ride the motorcycle. Like I said, the only way you will learn and get better is to do it. This is set realistic goals. Um, establish gradual achievable, achievable um, riding goals. So for me, um, I'm still working on my slow speed. I've done pretty good for the most part that I feel like I can change um, directions and I've been working on U-turns. Um, I was hitting and missing and then I actually did one, but that one is just not enough. It just allowed me to get familiar with it and realize that I could do it. Uh, my next thing I would like to do is probably um, going around steeper curves a lot better. So when I can get back on the bike and when the weather permits, I think I'm going to start going to the racetracks to see um, if I can improve that. Continuous learning. Like I said, it's a learning process. Every day, no matter you've been on the bike for five minutes and 20 years, you're going to always learn something new um, from riding a motorcycle. Things is you have to know your bike. Know and understand um, your limitations of your motorcycle. I watched plenty of videos how people taking curves on the, the sports bikes, crop rockets or whatever you may call it, and they going around the curves too fast or they think they can lean further, hitting the foot peg or their feet and then tumbling around the curve. Or they don't focus on the lean angle of that particular bike. Uh, mindful riding, stay present and focus on the road while riding. So that's kind of uh, pretty self-explanatory. Group awareness riding. This in particular, I think, is the biggest. Um, some people go into these groups um, for very different reasons. You might have an annual, you might have a, a ride for donate for toys for tots, cancer awareness, all of these different reasons why you may participate in this group. But you got to understand, one, that these are different riders that you've never ridden with. Maybe some you did, some you didn't. And your individual skill set. You have to take all that into consideration. And I've known, I've heard several group rides that say, well, we want you to be this way in formation, this way, that way. 
to me, um, I will not put myself in danger and I will not put anybody else in danger. If I know I'm not comfortable riding so many feet from the next person, I won't do it. And what I would do is i will say, hey, look, if you want your formation like this, either I ride to the back or I see you there. Because I'm not going to jeopardize my safety, one. And I'm definitely not going to jeopardize anybody else's safety. So you got to understand, um, ride with a group of people that understands your limitation and respect your, your skill set level. Or don't ride. Hey, and lastly, follow your gut. If you got to think about it twice, it's probably wrong. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably wrong. I just want everybody to get back safe. All right, that's it, y'all. It's your girl, Lady Will. Lay around for the next Let's Dive In topic. Peace.